Hi everyone, it's Candace with Candy Beast Creations. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's August, which means it's not too soon to be looking into Halloween decorations and crafts. So that's why I decided to make these cute accordion um, rosettes or flowers um, out of Halloween paper that I got with, from these stacks at Joann's. I've got Park Lane Crips and Cobwebs stack. It's just a project pad and I've got this Park Lane Boo collection pad. So this one's a little bit more traditional, a little bit funner, brighter colors. And then the Crypts and Cobwebs has a little bit more of a vintage look and um, more subdued colors like sepia tone. And I used mostly from the Crypts and Cobwebs collection. And I just made these different size rosettes and they're just so fun. I, they're nothing new, but it's just fun to use because you can put them in any of your decorations. I'm using mine as a backdrop on my, my shelf for Halloween. I just, I have a shelf in my entryway that I decorate seasonally. So this will be a good backdrop for all of my Halloween decorations that I put on that. Um, if this is something that you are interested in or you have a friend or know someone who is interested in things like this, go ahead and share it with them. Um, if you wanna be notified of all of my content, um, click the bell icon so that you can be notified. I usually post on Thursdays, so stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe the content. That always helps. And let's get into this. All right. Well, something I probably failed to mention is that this cardstock that I'm using is 12 by 12. There's 36 sheets. I've already used quite a bit from this Crips and Cobweb collection. So I don't have all of the paper in here to show you that I did just the other day because I made a bunch of these little rosettes. I don't know if you call them rosettes, but I just call them like accordion flowers or accordion rosettes. But um, so I've already used a lot of this paper but they just have some really cute double-sided paper. This has like spider webs. These have little like tag things that are really cute. I love the metallic on there. And there's just a really nice texture to some of these papers, but I really love this project pad. I am a huge cat lover, so I love this one. I love the crows in this. It's just really nice. I don't know, this is just really high quality paper. That one, I love this one. But because I've already used a bunch from this Crips and Cob Cobwebs, I think I'm gonna use from this Boo collection. So let's just do, let's see. I really love this one, but I think I wanna start with Another cat one. I really like this. Black and orange polka dot. So I'm going to take two pages from that. And I think I'm going to make... To start, I think I'm going to make a... Let's see, what size is this one? This one is about 8 inches. I think I'm going to make a 10 inch. Nope. Maybe even nine, okay. So if, if I'm doing a nine inch in diameter rosette, then that means I need to do a four and a half inch uh, strip of paper or strips of paper. So let's see, this is double-sided, so this will be the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to Cut in four and a half inch strips. My four and a half inch mark is right here. And it's gonna take four of these strips. That's why I needed to pull two pages. And then I'll just have this little strip left over. I'll have about what do we have three inches left so that I could make a six inch one later and we'll do another couple four and a half inch strips Oh, 
All right, and I will try to link everything that I have or that I'm using in this project today. This is a Martha Stewart piece. It's from Walmart, I think I got it at Walmart. And it's just a really nice scorer tool. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it scores paper really nice. And I just use this daughter tool that I probably just got on Amazon. Let's see if I have the piece that it came with. No, it comes with like a little a bone folder thing. Um, it's not in here right now, but anyway, I just like using these. It kind of has a little bit more of a smoother score when I use these, so I use them. Now you can choose however wide you want your, or the space you want between each of your scores or your folds. This one is probably only like a quarter inch or maybe even a half inch in between each one. This one, this 12 inch one, whoops, I'm losing it. This one, I think I did three quarters of an inch. So I think what I'm gonna do here is also three quarters of an inch in between. So that means I go, I push it right up against the edge and I measure three quarters of an inch here and score down. And then from there, three quarters of an inch is gonna be at the halfway mark. And then I go from the half to the next quarter and then from the quarter to the full three inches. So I go three quarters, half, one quarter, and then the full six. Then six and three quarters, seven and a half, eight and a quarter, nine. Nine and three quarters, ten and a half, and eleven and a quarter. Is that right? I think it's right. All right, so how I like to do it, I don't like to just go back and forth and back and forth and turn it and fold it and turn it and fold it. Just, you know, to save time, I just fold. Well, I think on the first fold, I'm going to fold down like this. And then I'm gonna skip this fold and fold it in the same direction. Skip this fold, fold to the next one, skip this fold, fold to the next one, skip this fold, fold that one in the same direction. Because of course every other one is gonna be in the same direction. So I skip, fold, skip, fold. And then I turn it around Okay. So I'll fold this way and then just fold it back on itself. Okay. So I love this scoring tool because it just makes it a perfect accordion size wise and everything. So I'm just going to keep doing that with all four strips with the same three quarters inch distance between each score. Alrighty, so I've got my four strips already pressed and folded. And I don't know if you noticed, but sometimes when I was folding, I would take my little dotting tool and I would just make a good crease across the sides. Sometimes if I didn't do an exact um, straight line on my scoring, then I would probably go off track a little bit and my paper would kind of fold over and be crooked like that. So when you're doing your accordion folding back and forth, you wanna just make sure your paper is in alignment on both sides so it doesn't go off track and make a crooked, you know, rosette. So you just wanna make sure it's straight as you're folding. So it just makes it nice and neat. Okay, 
So the next thing I want to do is I want to take a little bit of my glue. I like to use this Aileen's Tacky Glue for this particular thing. I really do love my Tombow glue, but for this reason, um, the Tombow glue has a little bit of give. So it's almost, I would say it's almost a silicone base where it kind of stretches a little bit and I don't want to stretch when, well, because these naturally want to pull away from each other right here, this is the kind that I want to use because it almost cements it more than has a little bit of stretch, elasticity to it almost. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and just on the edge, it's a little much, but just on the edge of and on the inside of each space, I just want to put a little bit of glue. and then hold it down for just a little bit each time. What I think I'm gonna do here is take one of these clamps, these paper clamps, and hold it in place so that it'll dry without me having to hold it. That'll be perfect. I have a few more in here. Now I'm gonna see if this is dry enough to work with. So you can also do the back side, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think I'll get these ones because some of the back got stuck together. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is just glue all these pieces together. And I kind of want to just stay up at the top so that I don't glue these pieces together right here. I kind of just want the top to be glued. So I have just a tiny bit of a watered down version of this Aileen's Tacky Glue in one of these. I got this from, I can't remember if it was Amazon or Timu, but I'll link it and show you. But this is a game changer these little almost hummingbird size nozzles. You have to kind of water it down or it won't, the glue won't push through that tiny little nozzle, but it is so good for precision work. So I just will line this very edge right here. Then you just want to line up the bottom and the top and just hold it in place for a bit. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is cut out a circle and glue it right here to cover this hole because this will help reinforce and hold everything in place. So I'm just going to eyeball this. If you have a circle cutter, great. Or a Cricut or whatever. I'm just going to try to cut it as evenly as I can. And I think that's pretty good. And I'll just move these ones away from the center and keep these ones here. It's probably dry enough, but I'm just going to keep them there. And I'll take the back of my circle, glue around the edges. And then just try to center it and then press down. You'll probably press down for a couple minutes, I don't know, until it's dry. <laughs> 
you just want to make sure that it touches all the peaks of the folds so it holds them all in place. And then after this dries or while it's drying, I'll flip it over and I'll do the other side as well just to doubly reinforce it. All right, see how when I try to lift it, it kind of folds in like that. That's why I'll do the back so that it won't budge when I move it around. It'll make a huge difference. It'll keep this center circle from folding in or folding out like that. Okay, when I put this on the center, I wanna try to push the edges inward so that the circle closes as much as possible. So that's what I'll be doing from the sides, trying to just set it so it's tight inside. Okay, it's still not completely dry, but for the most part it's dry and it's set in place and it just makes it a lot more sturdy so that when I you know, move it around or whatever, it doesn't collapse inside one or the other. Um, but yeah, I think that turned out really cute. You can do a really cute variation um, where you, maybe we'll do it really quick, where let's see, maybe we'll just do a full inch here just for explaining purposes. So what I'm trying to say is if you want to do make it more of a star kind of shape and have the tips point. You just take your scissors and cut on a slant up to the corner. And then look how fun, it creates a whole different effect, almost like a star effect. And these are so cute for Christmas ornaments or just a package topper like with a tag. So cute, the possibilities are endless, and I just think they're such a fun little addition to any, any decor that you use. So yeah, you can do different sizes, you can do different shapes, you can even round this. So if you wanna make it a little bit more soft, you can just sort of round off that edge like this. That kind of a tip. Anyway, it just adds a little bit of a different shape and I love it. All right, so here's my little entryway shelf. You see I kind of overloaded it a little bit. I don't know if I'll use all these, but I'll just put my little knickknacks in front right here and it'll just be a little backdrop for what I put there. Um, something else, another variation you can do is you can actually string the tops of these um, on just a string and make a little banner of it and just kind of swoop it down here. But lots of things you can do with it. You can put them on like play settings. You can put like a name card on the front of each if you want, like if you want to just do a small, a small one like one of these for like a play setting with people's names on it. There's just lots of th different things you can do them. You can hang them from the backs of your chairs at your dining table and just make every holiday fun and festive with these cute little rosettes. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today. It was so fun making these little paper rosettes. I love paper crafts. I just love the pattern and the color and just the possibilities of being able to create whatever I want. And these are just so fun that you can use them for any holiday. You can just decorate with Christmas or you can decorate for Easter or whatever and they just make a fun little accent to anything or any way you decorate. So thanks so much for joining me and stay tuned for the next one. Have a good one.